Hey, what's up, beautiful Bellcast listeners? Beautiful Bellcast listeners. That was a hard beat. I just had to run it back real quick. I am Gio. And I'm Bart. Nice. I'm trying to double down on your hard B. Yeah, because I was like, what's up, beautiful people? Oh, it was actually Bellcast listeners. Yeah. But I was thinking beautiful people. Beautiful people. Yeah. People. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. I actually wanted to take this podcast to uh, address some of the things that um, I really admire about you. Oh, shit. I feel like you do this every podcast. Never. So this is something never. that Don't, I'm not. No, 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 no. Fine. Never. Can I, can I, can I interject real quick? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> That's what I like. Fuck you, bitch. Yep. I like that Cock tough. Sucker. <laughs> oh, yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> so I like that tough love type of shit. Naughty babe. <laughs> That one, that one's actually really good. Oh. So I like this naughty, what? <laughs> what the hell is going on? I was so, going to give you a string of compliments I know, and now you make I know. yourself like a dumbass. No, I'm not trying to. I'm Straight just trying. dumb fuck. No, can I talk? Lower intelligence being. Shut up. Uh, so what I was going to say was, I feel like you do this a lot and I appreciate it and you do it in the podcast. I don't. Well, I feel it. So whether tripping. you're doing it or not, fine. I'm tripping, but I feel it. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm I'm, I, I'm not used to it. Okay. So I'm working on that. I'm working on receiving these compliments. I'm really just trying to compliment myself and really believe that. So like, it's kind of like the dad that calls his daughter beautiful. Right. And it's like, duh, you're supposed to say that you're my dad. Right. So like, um, when you're telling me these things, I'm always like, no, take it, take it, accept it. It's true. That's what he feels. But then, you know, the other part. I haven't always like, done this. No, you haven't. But I'm saying on the podcast, you do do that. And no, like, and that's why I want to address it. Because uh, I didn't always do this. Okay. And I think um, if there is such a thing as an Asian tiger boyfriend or Asian tiger husband. Oh, yeah. I think that's what I was. Because probably for the first five, maybe even six years of our relationship, I never gave you any any compliments and you would ask me like, do I even look good or do, do I do any things that impress you? And I'm like, we're <laughs> together, aren't we? And, and I didn't and, even realize and it for, was like. And for me, it was like just by virtue of me choosing you when I could have chose so many other people, that action in itself speaks volume. Yeah. So I'm like, why do I why the fuck do I got to waste my time telling you you're beautiful? Because if you're ugly to me, I would have dumped your ass a long time ago. Right. Or if you're dumb to me, I would have dumped your ass a long time ago. Right. Or if you're a scoundrel to me, I would have dumped your ass a long time ago. So I'm like, just by virtue, kind of like, um, you know, when your Asian parents tell you, like, you're like, am I a good son? They're like, am I beating your ass right now? Right. Then you're doing very good. <laughs> right, right, right. It's very simple. Or like your boss giving you extra work and it's like, well, wait, am I even doing a good job? It's like, I'm giving you more responsibility, aren't I? Yeah, I'm taking it from this person who's fucking it all up. And I'm giving it to you. So that means you're a great staff, you know? I don't know. So I was just like, a, as like a Asian tiger boyfriend, um, I was learning that there's different love languages, you know? Yeah. There's like, there's words I feel like of that, affirmation. All this shit came about like within the last like five years. I feel yeah. like this is all new thing. Well, which one do you like better? Do you like me like not saying shit and just by living by action? I don't got to fucking tell you shit. Okay, how? Or do you like me to shower you with compliments and tell you how I feel? Okay, um, when have you had the best relationship with me? What phase, like what, what age? That's a trick fucking question. Don't fucking pull me into this goddamn trap, <laughs> fucking hoe. Okay, fine. So then isn't this the best relationship we've ever had? Yeah, but it's a fucking trap. Don't fucking trap my ass, you fucking hoe. <laughs> Wait, hasn't this been the best? Like, haven't we been the best these past, what, Four, five, six Yeah, but there's years? so many fucking variables, so. <laughs> well, one of the it biggest. It could be. I mean, one of them, yes. Le trying, trying to entertain whatever trap you're trying to put me in. I'm not yes. trying to put you into any yes. trap. It could be I'm part just... of me being more complimentary. Yes. But it could also be you being not so insecure, too. Of course. Too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it could yeah, be yeah. all of those things. <laughs> I and saw you the being trap a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> there was no trap. All I'm asking There's is, definitely a trap with you wearing a fucking red jumpsuit like that. No, there is no trap. I'm trying to give you all the signs you're already a, up a ahead. I'm just like. Warning. Satellite installer, and you're coming here to rob my house. Satellite installers are blue jumpsuits. Bro. Whatever. They don't have the fucking swaggy red ones, okay? The I who work wears for the, the red ones? The fire department. The fake fire department. <laughs> um, no, I feel like this has been the best 
relationship we've had within these past what six five five years five six years yeah um and i feel like it's due to the things that you just said right the insecurity fucking thingy and then you just so you're also setting a trap by you saying that like oh it's because now i compliment you but it's not that it's the fact that you're more vulnerable and more vocal about what's going on in your head, regardless if it's good or bad. Because even when we would get into fights, um, you were just this emotional fucking little baby. And you would think you're being all logical and you're like telling me what you think is going on, which is the obvious problem. But then when we peel back the layers, it's like all this emotional like shit that you're being vulnerable and you just didn't even know how to open up about. Yeah, that's true. So, yes. I guess I was setting traps, but I guess so were you. Or we weren't setting traps. I weren't traps setting and no we're traps. Talking, did? No, I wasn't setting no traps. Um, What'd you press? I was gonna drop the mic, but I was like, oh, but it's attached to an arm, and I'm like, you can't really drop the mic, so I'm just gonna. So you decided tap the to mic. do a confusing act instead. <laughs> yeah. I want to see you do a stand-up show and say a joke. And see like how the crowd reacts to that. <laughs> and just I like, never realized how all girly- the comedians in the green room were like, wait, what the fuck? Dude, I never realized how girly I am Get until out of here. <laughs> I never realized how girly I am until you mock my movements. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so doing this, I didn't even think was girly. Like I don't think I'm a girly girl. That was like a Skittles commercial. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> but it's not until you do it that I'm like, oh shit, that's actually pretty girly. Um, but okay, fine. I, it's just I I need to get used to receiving compliments. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just didn't want a whole fucking podcast of you showering. I me actually didn't want to. That wasn't even uh, the point of the podcast. The point of this episode, actually, now that we're here, is I want to know what you're proud of yourself about. Oh, yeah. No, I have a ton of that shit. Yeah, yeah. I can go all day, but I don't want to talk about myself. I do want to. I really do want Why? to. Why? Well, I think um, I don't think people spend enough time patting themselves on the back. You know, yeah, I think I, like, I've done that now. I'm good with that now. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think people do that enough. And I think um, the more people publicly do it, the more it feels okay about it. You know, like I, I don't know, like uh, especially growing up in an Asian community, it's like your compliments need to be told by other people. Like, Same you know, in my it's community. Like, like, yeah, your parents got to go. Like, oh, yeah, my son got into this school or that school. He's like this. Well, no, actually, it's wor- it's different in my community because in my community, you want to talk shit about your kids. Same hit the same here. Oh, yeah. We don't go, oh, my school did this and then my kid went No, to they do it as a backhanded compliment. Ah, uh, gotcha. They're like, oh, my son just got into Harvard and he's studying all the time. He doesn't have a love life. There you go. Like yeah, that, like yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff, same. you know? Like, oh, yeah. He just got a Mercedes Benz from his school, but the insurance is crazy. Like that kind. They're like, oh, I see. You're trying to brag, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. not really, but I'll talk shit. Humble, hum- humble bragger. Yeah, so I want to know what you're proud of. Like, what are you proud of yourself up until this point, 2021, as a woman, as a. Uh, the last five or six years, the best relationship we ever had, the previous five or six mm-hmm. years, the worst relationship we ever had, all this new identity stuff that you've been like going through. And like, what are some of the things that you're, you're really proud of? Damn, you always put me on the spotlight, man. Okay, so, I mean, I'm- There's a literal spotlight right here. There, there is. So you should know that every time we do an episode, there's gonna be a spotlight. Okay, fine. Um, So I'm proud of a lot of things that I've accomplished. So- First of all, I'm proud of just my beginnings, just me as like growing up a uh, Carreño, right? Like my family's last name. Um, I didn't really have like, I mean, I had a father figure in my life. You know, I had parents in my life and I knew that they cared. And I, you know, I never felt like I was a poor kid. Um, I never felt like, I don't know, I never felt like I was lacking anything, right? Like there's like when you compare, your, like when you're in school and you compare yourself to, friends or the popular kids are like man i want those shoes or like it's material things that at least for me that i would notice that i'm like damn that's what i'm lacking but i never felt poor and like we can't afford that it just always felt like oh that's just on a reason uh on on um unrealistic ask okay you never um because i know your dad drives a pickup truck yeah like the way my dad did yeah and just that alone i'm like it's it's ironic i fucking love trucks now but as a kid i'm like yeah, I can get a regular car. Like, everyone has a regular car. Well, I think it was different because I was also in a community where we were all kind of in the same status. Oh, right? Okay. So like it yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like the amount of like rich kids that we have were like nothing really. Like it I was see. rare to see a kid with like a boss ass car. Like I remember one kid, um, he came from, from money, but because I think his family won like the lottery or some shit. And yeah. he came to school in a Corvette and that was like, whoa you know and even then he wasn't even like that flashy yeah 
So like, um, yeah, like, so, so from that era of my life, like my adolescence, I guess, I was always like, like I felt very lonely and shit, but, and depressed, but I always, like, I'm proud that I was always able to find solutions for the things that I wanted, whether it was like materialistic things or like, you know, prepping for like my college career or just anything that I wanted in that time frame, like doing all that on my own. You use that to battle your loneliness or your depression? Use what? Like the things that you want to get after. Um, I don't even know. I just remember being really sad, like in high school and stuff and just feeling like really lonely. Did you talk to anybody about that? Not really. Cause I just, I mean, we're not taught to talk about our emotions, you know, like I was just like, I, I was just in my own head being sad. But was there anyone in your family you could talk to back then? No. So not a sibling, not a cousin. Not no, a, the age the age gap is too big. What about your grandma? Um, when I was growing up, we she was like back and forth from like she lived in her own place out in Burbank, oh, I see. and then she would spend a couple months in Mexico and then come back, spend a couple months out here. So we weren't really that tight. I see. My grandma started living with us when I was already in college, which is already like too late. Yeah. Um. So like, I just had like these short term goals of things that I wanted to achieve. And I think I just focused on that. So the first one being the most simplistic one of like, I just want freedom, right? So how then how do I get freedom? Oh, well then I'm going to work. I'm going to work a job that's as far away as possible. Okay. That's one level of freedom. The next one would be getting a car, you know? So like I had these little, these little like levels that I wanted to achieve to achieve my ultimate goal at that time, which is just having freedom. Cause I just didn't have it. Um, but like finding clever ways to do that you know so like whether that was me going hey i'm going to be on a reality tv show that's going to like let me travel the world and like experience life in a very safe way right because i'm trying to pitch it to my parents who um because i grew up in the hood they were always trying to like shelter us and protect us from like all that shit right so because of that i just didn't have a social life whatsoever so just me just being crafty and finding different ways to get after what i wanted um, and not even thinking about it like that, just going, damn, this is where I'm at and this sucks. And that's where I want to be. Okay. Well, what steps can I take that are within my control that I can head in that direction? And like looking back at it now, not having real guidance, you know, cause everyone's just so busy and like just trying to survive and shit in my family that, um, I didn't really have anybody to like say, these are the steps that you take, you know, like I would look at my older sister and older brother and see what they were kind of doing and going, well, okay, that's. That's kind of what I can do too, but I never really had the guidance of like, okay, this is how you're going to apply for college. This is what college life is going to be like. You know, it was just like kind of throwing myself in all those environments. Um, and you were proud of all that? Absolutely. You're proud of it then or you're proud of it now? Then and now. I see. Because it was like one of those things that um, I didn't need anyone for it. You know, like I made it happen. So I could have probably done it better with more help, but the fact that I did it on my own is what I'm really like proud of. Um, and then that just kind of like, you know, trickles into the rest of my life and everything else that I've been able to achieve up until this point. But that was one of the biggest things. The other thing that I'm super proud of is the fact that um, when I want to achieve something, it's really hard for me not to achieve that. Um, so one of the most simplest things um, that I was able to control at a younger age that didn't evolve, that didn't um, necessarily need much other than like a lot of self work was uniting with my family. <clears throat> Cause um, yeah, we didn't grow up very together. I think it's because of the age gap and just, just my family structure. Like we're not even close to a lot of our extended family and stuff. Like it's not something that was really emphasized in my family, or at least that I didn't pick up on, even if it was, maybe I just, I didn't catch on to it. Are your brothers, I mean, your dad and his brother's tight. They're, they're really tight. Because when they're together, they seem really they're tight. They're really, really tight. Then how come uh, like the immediate family wasn't such a like bonded family thing? I don't know. I just think that they were tight just with themselves. Oh, uh, not bringing the rest of them. Yeah. Like the plus ones together. Yeah. And I mean, and it mm. could be because there's a lot of secrets and a lot yeah. of like having each other's back type of shit. Or there's just probably drama. Like, you know, I know my mom would mention things like her mother-in-law that passed when they were, or even her father-in-law like they just had a turbulent relationship so i think there's just a lot of back-end shit that i don't have all the details to that just didn't allow for that to happen but for me um i knew what i wanted or how i wanted my family relationship to be so like um one of the first ones was repairing the relationship with my dad which was like 
horrible from when I was like 12, 13, up until I was in my 20s. Damn, like it was that a minute. young? It was a minute. I knew you and your dad weren't really weren't talking like 15 or 16. Yeah, it was a minute. So it was, because it was, you were telling me like. um, It was you, before you I guys, went in high school. Yeah, it's like a pretty much like three, four, five year like silence period. Yeah. Where you guys sit at the same dinner table and you guys just pretending like each other didn't even exist. Yeah. And that it was, was like that. I was like, what? That's crazy. Yeah, for years. And like talking about it now, I'm like, that is, <clears throat> excuse me, that is really crazy. Um, but yeah, that was the first one that I, I was like, fuck. Like, I don't know how to fucking resolve this stuff. I'm like still a kid, you know, and I, I don't know anything about conflict resolution. I don't know anything about anything. What made you want to resolve it with your dad? He's my dad. So just because like, oh, he's my pops. And well, because so like, remember we have these conversations about like. And then why not sooner? Then why not like. 16. Like why, why wasn't mature enough? Oh. Yeah. So like, you know how those conversations we have of, of like how we want to see things in like the future? Yeah. It was one of those things. But before I get into that, let's pause real quick and introduce our sponsors. All right. So my neighborhood in Las Vegas has been getting really cool because I want to say maybe two weeks ago, we were still in the like 90s to 100 out here. So waking up, now in the morning feels like fall and I'm so excited because fall is here, which means a bunch of fall flavors start coming in. Mm -hmm. And this is when Daily Harvest, one of my favorites, is bringing some really cool items to their menu. So Daily Harvest delivers delicious harvest bowls, flatbread, smoothies, and more, all built on organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. I absolutely love it because it's whole foods, fruits, vegetables, really delicious, healthy recipes. And you know, you guys have all been seeing my physical transformation. I'm all about it. I'm all about really fueling your body with some really high quality stuff. So Daily Harvest is one of my go-tos, again, because they have bowls, flatbreads, and smoothies. You keep them in your freezer. Um, they already come packaged and ready for you to just put them in the microwave and eat directly out of it. So if you're going to make a smoothie, it comes in a cup. You put all of that into um, your, what is it called? The blender. blender. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was thinking about it in Spanish. Blenderia. Uh, <laughs> licuadora. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, and then you put it directly back into the cup and you're on the go. So for someone like me who has a tight schedule with a kid, a toddler, like breakfast in the morning has just become so easy. You pull it out of the freezer. You know that you're giving your body and your baby, your kid, some really high quality ingredients. So for everyone listening right now, enjoy this time of year more like the way we are with Daily Harvest. Make sure to go to dailyharvest.com slash bail, B-E-A-W, to get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash bail for up to $40 off your first box. dailyharvest.com slash bail. Shout out to our sponsor, ZipRecruiter. You know, the easiest way to do things in life isn't when you have to go through a giant haystack to find the thing that you want. The it's, needle. Yeah, it's easy when someone can pitch you all of the best things. And that is the exact same thing for hiring. Imagine that you can choose your ideal candidate before they even apply which is crazy. And that's where ZipRecruiter's invite to apply comes in. It gives you the hiring manager or entrepreneur or boss or whatever position that you are, the power to pick your favorites from the top candidates. And you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com. So how does invite to apply work? Well, when you post a job listing on ZipRecruiter, they send you the most qualified people for the job ready. You can review these candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job. And what's cool about this, if you're on the other side, you can even use this to see if other companies are interested in you. So I know a lot of people are always job shopping to see they're getting the most benefits, the best salary and all that. So you can put yourself on ZipRecruiter and see if there's other people that would be valuing you more than where your current company is. So go see for yourself if this could benefit you at all. Just go to the exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash bail, B-E-A-W to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash bail, B-E-A-W, the smartest way to hire. And we're back. And so your question was, why didn't I resolve it sooner? No, my question was, what's worse, addicted to porno or masturbation? I think porno. Really? Yeah, because I think masturbation, um, yeah, I think you can do it with, I mean, I don't know. So shooting the shotgun every day in the shower is fine with you? I mean, I did. I turned out all right. Okay. So how come you repaired your relationship with your dad like that? <laughs> 
Um, so why did I want to do that? Yeah. So because, okay, so like at that time, my, my older sister was like my role model. Um, I didn't know anything else. I saw her and she went down the path that I, I, I thought that my parents were super proud of. Not that they're not. Um, <clears throat> but she was like the staple and the example for me. So even though I didn't have guidance, I at least had eyeballs that I could see what was going on. And I'm like, well, I guess that's what you're supposed to do. And, yeah. and the plan that I thought was supposed to happen is you graduate uh, high school, you go to college, you graduate college, you get a job. Once you get a job, you make more money. Once you make more money, you get a house, then you get married, then you have kids. The end. So that's just what I thought life was. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what I think everyone thinks life is. <clears throat> So and not, and there's not, not anything even wrong with it, too. No, there's not at and all. And it's almost like internationally, it's like that. You know, yeah. like in almost every culture, every country, you, the, the first thing you think about is, okay, how do I get educated so I can get the best job <clears throat> to bring the most bread home? If right. I can bring the most bread home, how do I, because you want to set up your quote unquote nest for your family, right? And your family includes your significant other and your yeah. kid. So you're like, you're <clears throat> almost across the world, like regardless if you're mining than the the Nile River or to freaking the mountains of Mongolia, like everyone's generally in the same thought process. Right. It makes sense, right? You're the what is it, the hierarchy of needs? Like mm -hmm. that kind of falls in it. <clears throat> um, so because I have that as my like as my roadmap, then I was like, oh shit, okay, so I'm about to like I've already graduated college. I mean uh, high school, I'm in college now. Like what is the rest of my life gonna look like? Like I'm on track with my roadmap. Like I'm about to graduate college. I'm going to, you know, I want to land a good job, house, marriage, relationship, all that stuff. And I'm like, damn, what is that going to look like when I have kids? And now I can't really bring them home or have like, I can't invite them over for parties or whatever, because now me and my dad are going to have a weird relationship. I'm like, this is, this is so weird. And I didn't want that. And just looking at that picture that, or that snapshot in the future just made me really sad. I'm like, damn, that sucks. Like that's your dad. And and I thought because he was the adult, he's the reasonable one. This whole time I was thinking, well, he'll, because I thought he was in the wrong. I was like, yes, I fucked up. And, and um, you know, I was, I was a bad kid or whatever. And I wasn't like going by his rules, which I mean, are fucking ridiculous for, now that I think about it, I'm like, the rules are, didn't really warrant the punishment of us not talking for that long. Anyway, um, that I was like, oh shit, okay. So I, I assumed and expected him to change and talk to me because he's the adult and he's the wise one and all that stuff. So I was waiting for him to do that. And then the older I got and the wiser I got, I'm like, I don't think that's going to happen. I didn't understand why it wouldn't happen other than it's not going to happen. In his defense, like the traditional family, at least in the Asian household, it's very like, oh, if you're like junior to me, it's up to you to figure it out and come to me. Like, I'm not going to stoop down to your level. Yeah. That's I mean, how it is, at least in the Asian family. Where like, I that's guess why it's you, like that That's too. why you never hear like elders apologizing. Right. You know, it's like. Same. No, no, no. We're not even on the same level. Like, don't. I'm not going to come to you. Are you kidding me? Same. But I felt like that was what was. That's what happens when it's like surface level mundane type of basic problems. Right. Like I didn't think when it was like something this severe where we're not talking for years mm. that it was like that. Um, and I watched a lot of Full House and I was just like, I don't know. I see it happen. It's not like it's not regular. It's not normal. Like Do it you watch happens. Mexican Full House. <laughs> no, because that one might be different. You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. All well, it was. So um, I remember I wanted to move out and like moving out without being married in our household is a big no, no. Like you just don't do that. Is that it's, Catholic tradition or what is that? I think it's all of that. Oh. Catholic, small town. Like what are the people going to think? Like you just want to move out to like Ho and shit, right? Yeah. What is that Cholo down the street going to think? And what is that ex-con <laughs> that been in the jail five times going to think about <clears throat> us? I mean, it wasn't that bad, but. Um, but it's just funny how people think about other people. Yeah. You know, like how their image. But it image, is small town how stuff. How their image matters so much to everyone else. Right. You know. Because then rumors. Yeah, whatever. So I get it. Um, So. Yeah, I was in my 20s and I remember like, dude, okay, me and my dad have a turbulent relationship. The, the household energy just feels really weird at this point or at this time in my life. My older brother, my older sister, they've already moved out. They're married. Um, it was me and my little sister. And I'm like, this is just weird. Like, I'm just being a nuisance at this point. Like, I'm only bringing in problems because everything I do, he has something to say, but he's not saying it to me. He's going through my mom. My mom's stressed. My little sister's like trying to come. So it was just like this weird dynamic that we had so i'm like 
Why don't I just spare all of us? I'm just going to move out. And I didn't want to move out and then leave and now have my dad going in on my mom, like your daughter, she doesn't listen, she left, look at that. So I wanted to leave with a clean slate. I wanted to get his approval and I was just like, or at least his his like respect that at least I was confronting him about an adult decision and letting him know like, hey, I respect your house and I'm going to leave this house and I just wanna let you know. So that was the main catalyst for me to have this conversation with him. So it was the future of what my life would look like and also going like, okay, I need to make the fucking family vibes in, in, in my house a little bit better. So yeah, I talked to him about the whole family thing and then that's when we started talking. So that really- The whole family of like, hey, if I have kids, I want you to be there, that kind of stuff? Um, so the first step was, hey, I'm moving out. And I'm letting you know because I respect you oh, and I'm, I'm being an adult. Did like roll That's when he cracked. Him. No, he cracked. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I, I I think I presented it in a very adult way. I was like, hey, I was like, I know you're disappointed in me. Decisions I how made. How did you even, I mean, did you have a, how did you brief him? Were you guys at the No, I room, went into his room. I said, hey, dad, can I talk to you for a minute? And what was he doing? Putting on shoes or? Uh, he was in his bedroom and um, he goes, yeah. He liked to read a lot. So he was reading. So just reading. So he's, he's in a calm state. Yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because if um, it was like working out, like yeah, that'd be dumb. doing bicep curls, you might like, I don't catch him. In yeah, not, time. yeah, that wouldn't be the right time, right place. Yeah. So he was in his room. It was a calm setting. Yes. Um, I also had told my mom before this thing and so to kind of prep her in case some shit was to pop off. I didn't want her to be like, wait, what the fuck is happening? Did you tell your I mom just, like, like it's time with your eyes? Yeah. And she was like, oh, fuck, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Oh, that's funny. So yeah, I told him. I was like, hey. But it took your mom like <clears> 10 minutes to leave the room. Because <laughs> she was like, you're <laughs> yeah. a fucking asshole. You're like, mom, it's time to go. She's like, that's a, no, she would know. She was already not even in the room. Oh, yes, I, I mean, I walked in there. I had my plan already. I like, I had my savings. I didn't need any help. I didn't need any decision making. Like, I had everything set, ready to go. So I go in there and I'm like, hey, dad, uh, I want to talk to you about something. And I was like, hey, I understand that you're really disappointed in me. You don't love me. You know, I fucked up, whatever. Like, I put out all my faults, right? That I knew he was feeling about me. So I put that all out there first and I said, I understand. This is your house. And I think I've, you know, I made a decision that, you know, I think it's best that I move out. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm like, um, this is my plan. Financially, I told him what my plan was, all that stuff. And then at the end of that, he goes, well, you think I don't love you? And then at that point, it was like, we both just started. Crying. I think it was just so many years of pent up. Pent up yeah. Yeah. Who like, cried first? I think it was just, I think it was him. Really? Yeah. It's kind of a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it was him because I think I came in going, all right, we haven't talked in forever. We both don't have any emotion about it, even though I, I definitely did, but I'm just trying to be strong. Um, and I'm like, this is an adult decision and I, I need to show him that I'm an adult. Adults don't cry. So yeah, I had my whole presentation ready. And I think because I was in that headspace, um, he was just taking it in and going like, oh, wow. Like, I guess he was just really moved. Did he accept everything <clears throat> logically? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He respected it. So, so you left on good terms. It wasn't like, I'm the no. fuck out of here. Yeah, I mean, because I went level-headed. Yeah. I went in with the plan. I think I presented it in a very adult way. I wasn't being a child about like, you should have done this. It wasn't like a blame game. Yeah. It was all about like, hey, I accept your decision to not talk to me. I accept that that is your reality. Mm. Um, I don't necessarily agree with your reality. I have my own reality, but I'm saying I understand where you're coming from because I just felt like, Okay, if he's not changing, then I'm perceiving it wrong. I'm perceiving it wrong that the adult needs to step down or whatever. I I came to a realization that like, hmm, you can't really teach an old dog new tricks. Even though now I know a lot more and that's not what I believe in now, but at that time. Some dogs you can, some dogs you can, you know? Right, I didn't know that though. I just assumed that, damn, he's pretty set on his ways. So that's it. So now I need to, like, I'm not set in my ways yet. I yeah. can change, I have no problem. So that's when my mindset started changing. So just having that um, ability to be able to empathize and, and put myself in other people's shoes, that that's another thing I'm really proud of. Um, I feel like it's really, that's it one really of the, helps. That's one of the things that I think I admire the most, 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 most about you is like you're, I think you're an empathetic genius. Oh, thank you. Baby. Yeah, like I, you know, people, they, they practice empathy or they say they try, and even myself, right? I say I try, 
But you know, like when you play devil's advocate, like let's say you get in an argument with someone, I get in an argument with this guy, I don't know, John or something, right? And and we're good friends. So obviously I want to get the, get his back. But I also believe in my ideals. And most people I believe are like this, where you're like, you fight, 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 fight. And you're like, fuck, man, what the fuck's going on? And you're like, oh, let me put myself in John's shoes. Like, like, let's see what's going on, right? And they try. But because you are yourself, you still hold yourself back by like 1%. You know, so as much as you try to empathize for John, you're like, yeah, but if I was John, I wouldn't have done it like that. And when you though, the minute those words come out, that means you still had your own back more than John's. Yeah, because, you know, when you're in acting, right, like a good movie, the villain doesn't think he's a villain. Right. When the villain, like when you're casting for the script and like like Loki, for example, right, when he's reading a Marvel movie, he's thinking he's doing the right thing for the universe. Right. It Through his brain, his logic. And the villain doesn't know he's bad. He's just like, what the fuck? You guys are crazy. Yeah. And that's true empathy in my in, in my opinion. And when I see you talk about things, when you put yourself in other people's shoe, you're one of the few people that I've seen practice true empathy where you're like, you're all the way in the other person's shoes and you can see how you're wrong through that person's eyes. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, that's that's one of the greatest things I admire about you. Thanks, Papa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it's sucking abilities. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> well, I guess not really. Thanks. <laughs> I've practiced a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, got him back, baby. Really? Um, I think I won both times. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to say I've practiced a lot in the past before you. No, it's it's great. It's great. Yeah, okay. That's why that's why <laughs> nice. I can't last that long. Didn't get you back. All no. right, didn't get you back. No. Okay, I, cool. I get the rewards of all that experience. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, yeah. So that was the first time I was really able to tap into that, that I can remember at least where I'm like, oh, shit, that's what he's thinking. That's what he's probably feeling. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the first times I could recall, at least. That Did I, you guys that hug I did it that. out after that? Yeah, it was like it was literally that conversation changed everything. That's so cute. Um, Because I was able to just strip down my own ego and my own wants and desires and being like, okay, well, what the fuck is this guy feeling? Or like, what's his background that like is not allowing this relationship to happen? Like, I know my side, but it obviously takes two people. Yeah. So when I was able to look at that, um, like instantly our relationship changed. Like literally from that moment forward, we were the old, the old people just didn't even exist. That's so cool. Yeah, it was super cool. So um, having that and applying that with all of the broken relationships I had with all of my family members or like my brothers and sisters. Um, that's one thing I'm super proud of because like all the accolades or like achievements in terms of like business or whatever that I, that I accomplish, like, yeah, that's amazing. And that's great. And I'm also proud of that. But if I don't have a strong family or friend unit, then for me, I feel like it's pretty empty. Yeah. Um, Family and friendship is really important to me, or just having deep relationships are really important to me. How can we look like you can cry? I have allergies. Ah, oh, okay. I'm just kidding. I don't oh, know. um, yeah. So having deep relationships to me is is really important. So the fact that I come from the background that I do and able to kind of navigate it on my own and figure it out and like have really cool relationships now, uh, that's one of the things I'm really proud of. That's awesome. Thank you. That's something I'm still trying to work on because, like, you know, I'm forever <clears throat> trolling my mom. Um, me and my dad are a little bit better. And I don't know. I don't know if I've taken. I know for sure. I know. Actually, I, I've, I haven't taken that proactive approach like you have where I sit down and talk to him. Um, but through the times that we have hung out and like especially like coming to Vegas, taking like many road trips and stuff, having that extended long periods of time have been really good. And one thing I guess that I have been proactive on is really checking myself when he says things and I have like a knee jerk reaction where, you know, when you have so many years of like defenses, right? It's like if your mom goes like this, you're like, like this already to not go like this, to actually like turn that into a hug or something. So like my dad will say things in a very confrontational way. Like that's the only way he knows how to speak is him. He can't say like he notices something new he'll pretty much just say what's wrong with what he sees now. Yeah. Right? Like the the like one of the most recent examples when we got the other house in LA, the other forever home where he sees how big the yard is. He goes, this is a big yard. You know how much you're going to spend on concrete? And I'm like, I don't, I can't tell that's a diss or you're trying to tell me you're proud of me, you know? And then so um, 
now I'm trying to put myself in a mindset where I hear things like that. I'm like, it's a big yard. He's proud of me. I was able to buy a big house. So I go, my dad's proud of me, you know, and then I, I speak yeah. to him like that. And that helps him like tear down his like walls a little bit too. But I'm still working on it because um, it's hard. And Fuck I think, yeah, it's hard. Especially with the pandemic with my mom, since I only talk to her through text and my Chinese isn't the best. I'm still, we haven't had our chance to have like those lengthy conversations. Yeah. So um, I'm actually, I actually am eager when she comes here, then we can probably work on it more actively. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's hard, right? Because you have to understand like what you want um, when it, when in dealing in a relationship, what you want, you're not going to get a hundred percent of the time. Like you have to be willing to let that go first. Yeah. Um, so if that's the first thing that goes out the window, then the second one would be like, all right, well, how can I like, how can I make this person feel happy? How can I make this person feel, um, heard and understood? And then that kind of like is what I was doing, you know, where it's like, how do I get my point across while still really understanding them and not offending them and having a conversation about it? Yeah. It's hard because um, it was it's really hard. How did you not like or how did you resist talking to your dad and in the middle of it going, well, here's a couple of jabs for like all those years that were silent, you know, um, Cause it's I mean, easy, you know, when you get in an yeah. argument and stuff where you're talking like it's easy to like get riled up and like feel vengeful and you got to like do some like say a couple of things in spite just to get it off your chest. Yeah, I think because um, I play a lot of scenarios out in my head and when I would do shit like that. Like I would play that shit out in my head. I'm like, okay, then it stops. The conversation stops, mm. right? Cause now it's like a back and forth. And then I go, well, what's the big picture here? Like, what am I really trying to achieve? Am I trying to achieve? So at that point it was like, just getting his blessing. Like, that's all I want. I just want no more drama in this house. I want this, the vibes in this home and my mom to feel good and my sister to feel good. So how do I achieve that? Is it me feeling good about myself and me finally getting the closure that I want? Or is it, like the family dynamic. Is that what I want? Like which one's greater? Mm -hmm. And then kind of going with that and then just sticking to that plan. Cause like, yeah, I might feel like, fuck, I got it off my chest, but like he's going to get shit off his chest too. And like now we're going back and forth and it doesn't really move anywhere because it's like, I'm right. And because I was able to empathize, I'm like, well, then you're also right. Like we just didn't agree with how it all played out, you know? But I'm like, it doesn't like, that's, that's in the past. Like, I'm I'm quick to be like the past is in the past. Let's learn from it and move on. Like I don't, it's hard for me to live in the past. So because already I don't live in the past for me to have to like get it out and like feel satisfied about it. It doesn't matter to me because what matters to me is like the present and then the future. Cause I'm like, well, I want to be happy. And if I don't get the closure that I wanted here, I didn't really need it because now I have what I want, which is harmony and like that deep connection. I yeah. see. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's what I need to focus on when I talk to my mom. Because a lot of times I think I'm so fed up of her shit when she like sends me things. I just troll back because it feels good in the in the moment. But then I'm like, but what's the end game? Yeah, yeah. like what do you want? Like, do you want her to understand you? And yeah. it's and if you want her to understand you, then I would ask, well, why does it matter that she understands you? Like, why does it matter so much? You know, yeah. and like and like also going, well, <laughs> Do you even understand yourself like that? You know, like I've noticed when I have conversations with certain people, I get different understandings of myself because they'll bring in a new perspective up that I'm like, oh, fuck. I didn't even think you could think like that. Give me an example. Mm, okay. Something as like simple as like Shannon and her husband, right? Sexy uh, Jared. Jared. Yeah. yeah. Sexy Jared. Okay. Sexy Jared. Um, how they have an open relationship. Yeah. So for me, growing up super traditional, you don't leave the house if you're not married. If like you don't go to slumber parties, like you don't party, you don't like very conservative and traditional, right? Yeah. You don't even get divorced. If Like you would rather just be separated and never marry again so that nobody knows that you got divorced. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's that extreme, right? Yeah. And then running into people and meeting people and like really respecting and admiring people like Shannon and Jared. And sexy going, Jared. Sexy Jared. And then going, oh shit, this this also can be a harmonious relationship where both of you guys mutually agreed to have this style of a relationship and it's very successful. Oh shit. Damn. 
Okay, well, let me learn more about myself. Hmm, could I ever do that? Well, and then you just question and you find things like, you know, like through their story, at least that's how I work through people's stories. Um, yeah, I just learn so much and I already start taking things that I can apply, whether it's going to be applied into my relationship or just my life or just not even romantically being applied, just that open mindedness of like, um, there's just alternative ways to live and think and stuff, um, is what helps me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, let's pause real quick. Um, and I'm going to introduce our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsor Quip. Okay. Guys, when was the last time you guys got rewarded for brushing your teeth? Never. Or at least probably when the dentist was like, you don't have a cavity, but that's already not fun. All right. So with Quip's Smart Electric Toothbrush, good habits can earn you great perks like free products, gift cards, and more. Isn't this crazy? What a time to be alive. I love it. Okay. So the Quip Smart Brush for adults and kids uh, connects to the Quip app with Bluetooth. So it'll start tracking when and how while you brush your teeth, give you tips and coaching on how to improve your habits. Yes, because I think I learned that way too late in life. Um, you're going to earn points for daily brushing and bonus points for completing challenges like streaks. So you'll be able to redeem for rewards like free products, gift cards, and discounts from Quip and Partners. So get started right now getting your rewards for brushing your teeth. Go to getquip.com slash bail, B-E-A-W, right now to save $10 on a Quip Smart Electric Toothbrush. That's $10 off a Smart Electric Toothbrush at getquip.com slash bail, B-E-A-W. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash bail. Okay, so I'm back to talk about one of my favorite games, one of my favorite pastimes. My Best app. Beast. Yeah, my app phone. This is my me time when like throughout the day I give myself to so many different areas and outlets of life that like it's a very important thing for me to feel centered and connected to myself and do whatever the F I want to do and have my me time. And that's me playing. It's peaceful. The graphics are so dang cute. I'm playing and it's like a story is unfolding right before my eyes. So if you've never played this game, it's the freaking cutest game ever. Okay, so um, you are in a band of like, not a band, like a music band, but like you have buddies that are insects, okay? They're different insects and bugs and you're collecting these friends in every mission or level that you're playing. And the goal to advance to a different level is to kill these slugs that are just like terrorizing and freaking messing up your garden. Like this beautiful garden. We all know how hard it is to garden. And these fucking slugs come in and they're all trying to mess it all up. But nah, uh, uh, you and your bug homies need to attack them. You need to kill them. And you do. And you advance to the next level. And the scenery changes. And you don't need internet connection. And it's just the cutest graphics ever. So do yourself a favor. Disconnect from this world for a little bit. And jump into the world of Best Fiends because you're not going to regret it. It's super cute and it's a lot of fun. And it's challenging, okay? In the good way. So make sure to download Best Fiends for free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Shout out to our sponsor, Skillshare. Every one of us has a creative bug in us. Some of us do it as a hobby. Some of us do it as our profession. So what Skillshare is here to do is to provide an online learning community to empower you, to nurture you, and to build that creativity. And also in this day and age, regardless if you do do a creative job or if you work a traditional nine to five, like a lawyer or accountant, an engineer, or even a police officer, a lot of people are using social media to grow whatever profession or business that they're doing anyways, which is why I'm super interested in this class called Video for Instagram. Tell an engaging story in less than a minute. We all know Instagram changes algorithms all the time, but one thing that's doing really good right now is Reels as well as TikTok. So being able to tell a compelling story about your business, about your profession, about what you do, who you are in less than 60 seconds is more important than ever. So whether you're a dabbler, a pro, a hobbyist, or a master, you got that creative bug and discover what you can make with classes for every skill level. So explore your creativity at skillshare.com slash bail and get a one month free trial of premium membership. That's one month of a premium membership at skillshare.com 
dot com slash bail b e a w and we're back yeah i think it's really important to um focus on the big picture all the time like what is it that you want and then kind of working backwards from there knowing my mom though and knowing how crazy that she is do you think i can still get what i want but what do you want um kind of like what you wanted with your dad i think i want someone that's around that um really cares about Taika and if she can even give Taika half the love that she gave me in a, from a grandmotherly sense um I think Taika would love it um I don't see her not doing that now she's done that really yeah so if that's what you want that's how she is like she's nothing but love you know, the only thing is she's just not around. And she needs, but then for you to receive the love, you need to like bow down to her and do all kinds of like weird Chinese shit. Um, what do you mean? I've never done that, and I, well, re- she I fucking, feel a lot she, of love. She married us with like in in the middle of our living room, you know. Yeah, but like if you take it seriously, then yeah, it could be like kind of daunting, right? Yeah, and it's like whoa, that's fucking weird. But if you can like laugh at it and not laugh at her, but laugh at the idea of what's happening, yeah. And just be like, oh shit, that's not what I'm into. And it I, took I me find years. it kind of funny. It took me years to get there, <clears throat> you know? Yeah, like it's not a big deal. Like, okay, so she married us on the wedding, like I, on the, like in our fucking house. Bedroom. Yeah. It's not, it's weird. Let's put that out there first. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. what really changed? What really happened? Let's say she's, okay, let's say she moves to Vegas, right? And she goes, I also want a key to the house. Like, that's cool with you? <clears throat> I mean, that's different now. Cause now that's, it's, cause that's part of her love, you know? Like Yeah, her, that's cool. But I feel like that's what a relationship is. Like, it's just people presenting their ideas and wants on the table. Yeah. No one ever getting 100% what they want because that's not fair. I see. I, I, I At least I don't feel like it's fair. I feel like it's like in a relationship, it's a lot of like, I want this. I want this. Okay, well, let's look at everything. What do we want as a unit? Okay, now let's start like filtering all these things so that we start going in the direction of what the unit wants. Not necessarily compromising, but going, okay, do we both agree on like the end goal? Yeah. Is that, do we both agree to that? Cool. Okay, well, what do you want? What works? Okay, let's throw so this I out. Let's key, throw this I out. want the key to your house so I can come in anytime. Um, I'd be like. Because I want to be able to go to my son's house anytime. Um, well, I think I would try to figure that out. I'm not raised that way. And I would probably say no. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying no. Yes, it might be disrespectful or whatever, but. I mean, it's just because one of the times that she's still the most angry about me. Remember that one time when uh, you wanted to pee or whatever? Well, no, so pee. you lived in someone else's house. Yeah. As a roommate. Renting. Yeah, yeah. Renting. And then I moved in there. Uh, not officially yet, but I was going to go and rent to the other room soon. And then she came and stopped by because at your house and then she wanted to go inside and pee. And I was standing my ground because I was like, no, like you've come to every single one of my places, my houses and stuff like that. But now this is not my house or your house anymore and i'm like no if you need a pee you go to a restaurant and i was trying to stand my ground and then till this day she's still kind of bitter that she had to hold her pee and she almost peed her pants not being able to come inside that house yeah um and then she even asked for the key to that house i'm like no this is another landlord's house i can't just give you someone else's key yeah yeah i mean i I think that's not where the cultural differences like that has to get worked out and maybe i'm not understanding what her thing is right Cause it might be really good. Like we, she can get a set of keys, but now we said like, Hey, these are the ground rules. Like you, we have to do it this yeah, way. If you want to, you can't remodel the house and we're not. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> that shit has happened. Um, but then like, I just think there's just like a lot of like give and take that has to happen. Right. Again, always remembering what's the angle. What is it that you want? You know? So a lot of the times you are going to have to swallow a lot of the things that you want to say. Yeah. But also understanding why it is that you want to say them. And also I say this not like as like I, I want to also say that like I have to be on my A, a game too. Like I, I'm to not. To make that happen. Yeah. yeah I'm Everyone, not, everyone's prone to getting riled up. Fuck yeah. Like I've fucked up so many times. And it and yeah, I can empathize. But I'm still my person with my fucking ego and my past. And you know the way I was raised. And I'm, like there's a lot of times I fuck up. But it's like when I fuck up and it's really big that it's like really prevalent that I'm like, oh shit, now I need to empathize, you know? Yeah. So it's fucking hard work and like recognizing it and all that shit, like you really have to be on your A game. And like, yeah. that's hard because we got kids, we got life, we have bills, we have everything coming at us at once. And then to be on your A game, 
it's 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 hard. It's really hard. I can see why some of those uh like I want to say controlling, but like the stricter religions, they want you to pray and meditate multiple times because it helps like bring you back to ground zero. Yeah. Like that's one of the reasons my mom meditates so much is like in the morning you meditate or you pray or you do whatever service. So you're kind of grounded. So you don't wake up in a state of like high anxiety or stress, right? And you lash out. And we learn in science now, some people are just high quarters all morning, people like me. And then she also prays like during lunchtime. So she's always like continuously grounded so that she can always be on her A game, which I've seen improve a lot because there's times where like I troll her back or I say something I know is going to get under her skin and it won't last more than five minutes. Like yeah. She'll immediately like go back down to like ground zero, which is pretty, pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. So honestly, in this equation of you and your mom, I see you as being the biggest problem. What? <laughs> yeah. What do I need to do? Um. You need to be a Buddhist and vegetarian and give her no, all the keys to everything I own. No, you need to really, you need to really break yourself down yeah. and be vulnerable. Drop back to see what there. Well, she has nothing to do. That's she's her own thing, yeah, right? Like yeah, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. she's doing her work, and you've already said that you can recognize a difference in her, right? So she's doing the the, the work. She is. You or you're not doing any of it. What kind of work I need to do? Um. I feel like, and I could be completely fucking delusional here, but, nah, I feel, you're a genius. but I feel like the joking has to go out the window. Like what she says, you, sh you should, and this is starting extreme. Really trying to hear out what she's yes. saying. Yes. Like I would take what she's saying and be really serious and really just try to try to see what she's talking about and why she thinks it's important and like also like, feeling like it's important. So let's say she sends me a picture of a moon cake. Yes. What do I do? Well, what is it? Is it just a picture? Just a picture. Yeah, I would be like, oh man, these are delicious. And then now we have a whole palette in the neck, like in the front door tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, but then you would under like, that's just her showing love. Because now you know. Why that, is that bad? Well, I'm assuming you're thinking it's bad. Well, because there's times where like we get like 20 boxes of snacks from her, and you're like, what the hell is all this? And I'm like, I don't know. My mom's fucking crazy. She thinks yeah, she likes it. Yeah. Well, then now we have a bunch of shit we can share with a bunch of family like we can give it away we can i don't know do a bunch of different shit like i don't see how it's really bad like zooming out right yeah how is that a bad thing true it's good so yeah. even if i don't like it go, oh that, those things those weird peanuts you brought were really good i mean so after a while so in the beginning it's gonna be very formal yeah. because like you need to understand who she is you really want to cater to her you really want her to feel seen heard understood okay. right so you want to cater to that and once your relationships gets a little bit closer and closer and closer, then I feel like the way you talk to each other now becomes different. And now you can have heart to hearts and you can be like, hey, you know those mooncakes? Like I, you know, I really appreciate it and I love it. And she really knows where you're coming from now because she knows who you are. Yeah. You can say like, don't worry about it. I, you know, I only said I liked it because, you know, it made you really happy, but I, I really don't like yeah, it. Yeah, but and throwing because, them all in the trash. Then I, but you're making jokes, right? Well, what if I did? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of rude. I wouldn't oh, say that either, but- now that you have a different relationship together, then I feel like you can have these like real raw open conversations because there's there's no hidden agenda. There's no like ammo or shots fired. There's no like angle that you're working. You're not saying it in a way. And she also knows where you're coming from. She knows you enough to be like, oh yeah, that does seem excessive now, especially for his lifestyle and how he is. And yeah, he does train a lot. Like you're revealing a lot to her when you don't joke around. I see. Yeah. So like fixing relationships um, in the beginning, at least from my experience, and I could be doing it wrong, but I've seen success in my own life is just really kind of bowing down to that person. Not like physically, like literally bowing down to them, but going, hey, you know what? I'm stripping myself of everything. Obviously, you keep your fucking morals and your ethics and your standards. Right. But then going, hey, I strip everything away. And now I'm like at your service. Like, what do you find important? Oh, shit. That's what you find. Okay, now because you find it important, I'm also going to try to find it important too. And then you really get to understand who they are mm. as people. That's something I think would be good to practice every single day. What? Like stripping yourself down and like, you know, I think it's really easy. At least for me, it is. It's easy to like judge things. Yeah. So if someone brings it up, like I can, um, like let's say something that I feel like I'm, I'm good in, you know? Like I, I, someone could bring something up and I can go, oh, that's already misinformed. You know, that's already misinformed or that's wrong or, oh, this guy doesn't know what they're talking about. 
rather than like just stripping all that aside and hearing the excitement and like why they're excited about what they're excited yeah. about, regardless if it's right or wrong, but feeling that, yeah, that's something that I think um, I can definitely work on. And I think maybe even online, everyone can work on because like, that's where I see some of the biggest arguments, you know, like someone will post something and people think that person's misinformed or they feel the need to have to correct them. Yeah. Whereas it's completely missing the point of why they're even posting, why they're posting right. what they're doing. And also I think that's what a lot of the people that like to practice uh, psychedelics call the ego death mm. where, you know, you do strip yourself away where yeah. it's no longer, Oh, what does Bart want? What is, what, I'm an expert in this, or I feel like this, or I know this, or I judge that. It's like, no, 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 let's just strip that away. We're all the same. Well, what's going on over there? That's how, is that how you feel about that? Yeah. That's awesome. I love how you feel about that. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to love how you feel about shit like that. But like, um, I think when you're pretty set on like your life, why? Like what you want. It's really clear. It becomes, or at least becomes really clear what you should give a fuck about. Right. So like if I'm saying, hey, these people in my life that I have in my life right now are the most important people and I want to make them happy then that's all I'm really focusing on. I'm like, well, what is making them happy looks like? Oh shit, making them happy is giving them my attention, showing up to the events that they put together, um, having deep, meaningful conversations with them, showing up when they're in an emergency, you know, like, so um, those are the things that are important to me and like me trying to be right or me having it my way, like, yeah, sometimes I want that, but then I go, fuck, when I'm on my A game, I'm like, does it really feed into the why of what I'm trying to create my life to be? And I'm like, nah, then throw it away. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, and I've because I've been doing that, um, I've I've been really it's been a really cool experience understanding people. And you see their walls come down and you see them be soft, like you see this transition happen right before your eyes, and you're just like, holy fuck. Like, I don't know if in the past with maybe my hard shell that I was making them also feel like closed off and tough and like act a certain way that now that I'm more vulnerable and I'm open and I'm softer that I'm receiving that as well. It's crazy. Cause like just even working with my team, my barbell team yeah. from when I, before I had Taika, when I had all my insecurities and all the shit I was trying to work on, like just me being more of a stern boss um, to now when I talk to people, it feels like, uh, it feels like more of like a, not a friendship. That's not the right way, but it just feels very friendly feels warmer, huh? Yeah, it feels warmer. It feels like there's a lot more trust. Like there's a lot more vulnerability in the in the conversation. Um, there's a lot more like openness, like raw openness of like, I'm stuck or I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And like, and then feeling like it's comfortable to say that instead of going like, I got this, everything's under control. But then when we're not talking, it's like, oh shit, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, you know? That's cute. Yeah, like you, you'll start seeing it. And feeling it from people, it's it's a really beautiful thing. Do you, do you feel like people are innately good and people are innately driven then? I feel like everyone is innately good. Unless they have like some chemical imbalances and these are like the super outliers, right? Yeah. But I always feel like everyone has the best intentions. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, like the really good coaches, right? Yeah. They almost feel like they assume everyone is awesome. Yeah. And then so even like the underperformer, like I, I feel like um, people are, are attracted to the hard ass coach because that guy just seems hard and got his shit, you know, like this, 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 this. But I feel like the really good coaches, they're like, oh man, that guy's not performing. And then they really are able to sit down and like get get warm and get like eye to eye and go like, yeah, what's going on? And yeah. kind of pull back these layers. Is it like you feel like all this is all this hard work you put in isn't going to pay off later on? Or yeah. like, is there insecurity? You know, they're able to crack that. And it almost feels like once they crack that, they release the person that's inside that is innately a driven and a good person. Yeah, I do. I do feel that everyone is innately good. Right. But the more you're vulnerable and the more you understand yourself, the more you then and the more you interact with people, you start noticing majority of the people come from a place of like, where they're really trying to protect themselves, mm. right? And it's like, they've had trauma, they've had shit that like, now they have to be the, either hard ass or just they can't show these emotions to protect themselves. So majority are that way. But I have encountered people too that have been sheltered so much that their re reality is skewed that you kind of have to have that like, um, what is it called? Like just that real, real talk where it's like, I'm, I can't sugarcoat it, man. Like, you know, I love you, but you're fucking up a lot right now. And you kind of have to be stern. Oh, uh, yeah. Not everyone. Not everyone will perform 
or will um, excel if you like talk to them in a soft way. Not that you have to be mean. I don't like that actually. Talk to everyone in a soft way. I don't way. like the warm and fuzzies being talked yeah. to me. No, um, but I think I think majority of it and every single time is gaining someone's trust and then just giving it to them, right? Like if if they're like an abused puppy, then you don't ever want to like abuse them again. But you know, like, oh shit, I do have to soften the whatever I'm talking mm. about so that it can be received. For me, if someone's hard on me and they spend time on me, I know they care about me and I want to work even harder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that's... um. Maybe that's my love language. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what you're used to and you like that because for you, you're perceiving it as like, oh shit, they see that I'm capable yeah. and they know I'm not living up to I my standards. That. I see that, yeah. Yeah, I would probably do the same shit to you because I'm like, oh, he he's not receptive to the soft talk because now he's like, I ain't a bitch. Like, don't talk to me like I'm a bitch. You obviously don't know me. You know, if someone like you, I would be like, yo, what the fuck? You're fucking up right now. Like, dude, that's, that's not the shit we got to do. I was training with a celebrity coach and this fool was thrashing the fuck out of me. And this fool started calling me, let's go, King. Let's go, King. And you were like, I don't like that. I'm like, bro, you need to get your eyes checked. Let's not get carried away here, okay? I'm, I'm not fucking Chris Hemsworth. You you need to fucking relax. Yeah. I need someone to go, come on, you little fucking bitch. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, the, that's the shit I was saying in the beginning of this podcast. Yeah, I need um, that. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, not everyone you would, will receive it the same way, you know? So you don't have to be soft with every single person because some people have been soft their whole fucking life and they need someone to fucking be a little bit tough on them so you gotta be a swiss armor knife is what you're saying you just have to know people you just have to listen to people you're you'd so be surprised good. you'd be surprised how much people are telling you without them even telling you i know that's what those fbi negotiators know yeah they can see just the way that you're sitting there or your like clothing choices they're like um i know a lot of things yeah yeah and it's not easy i i'm still learning a lot of it um but because i have a company and i have you know my team and I interact with so many different people on my team. Everyone's so different and so unique that you kind of just start picking up on these patterns and you're like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would happen? Am I just like blowing your mind or what's yeah, going on? I'm just, learning. Oh. I'm just learning so much from you. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I think it's, I, I think you just have to, it's not one of those things that like you can keep in your head and like go in, in theory, you know, and like think about it. And like go, oh yeah, that all makes sense. Cause yeah, it does, but it you really have to apply it over and over and over again. And you have to practice it. It's kind of like drilling, you know? You have to do it. And the more you do it, the more you start seeing the benefits of it. Yeah, I'm gonna start with my mom. I'm gonna start today. Cool. I'm gonna text her something random. Yeah. Maybe tell her I love her or something like that. Yeah. And then uh, I I do think there's a box of mooncakes that came from an international shipment downstairs. Yeah. So I'm going to open it. I'm going to take a picture of it. Take a picture of because I know she'll be happy if she saw you me. you give her the swipe up link or a code? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm take a picture of me and Taika eating it. Oh, and that's her, cute. Because you know that. that's, yeah, you know that that's important to her. Yeah. Yeah. So like. Because before I think I would have <clears> taken the picture of it in the trash. Like, thank you, mom, for filling up my trash can. You're so rude. I know. I'm You're fucked up. You're trash, I know, dude. I know. But I need, I need to fix it. Yeah, every time we're on this podcast, I'm always bringing up your mom and you're like, ah, oh, I know you're so right. I know I am. It's just I, I have so much. I get it. I my, so much of my own trauma, you know, I get it. A hundred percent. I get it. But I think I think that's the work you got to do on yourself and go and you, you have to accept it because it is what it is. Yeah. So you're either going to carry it with you and that shit's heavy as fuck. Yeah. And you're going to have this shitty relationship or fix it. Yeah. Or you just have to accept that it is what it is and understand why it is that it happened. Yeah. And move on. Yeah, true. You know, like I have my traumas, like some pretty fucked up shit, but like years, like even before you, I've accepted it. You know, like I accepted that that's my truth and I understood. I don't understand. I mean, I guess I understand why it happened and I've forgiven the other person without ever like even talking to the other people. Um, yeah. And and it never comes up. But has your mom ever farted in front of a entire Boy Scout troop? <laughs> No, she hasn't. See? Our trauma is a little bit different, I think. But you're here now. What does that have to, do, are, with, what are those, that have to do with the farts? Where are those people? Who gives a fuck? They're probably... It's a funny story. Because of all this trauma that you had, Yeah. look at this beautiful fucking life that you've created with all these stories. Yeah, that's true. You're going to build a book. I mean, you're going to write a book. You're going to fucking film a movie and shit. I like, should probably give my mom the key then so we have more stories. 
I mean, this is also my house. <laughs> <laughs> so you can give her half. A key. You can give her your half of the key. Yeah, I'll give her the key and then she can come and remodel the house and we can have awesome vlogs. I mean, no, this is still my she house. She builds a Buddhist temple out of our living room. Yo, that's funny. Okay, what if we buy two houses? One that we pretend live in and, and we then keep the her real both one. Of her keys, yeah. No, we give her just one. No, we want double the stories. Oh, God damn it. All right. Well, on that note, everybody, thank you for the topic. I I don't like talking about myself, but I'm learning to really get into it. Yeah. So thank you for pushing You're me. You're welcome. Um, Fucking hoe. <laughs> that's the shit I like. Yep, bitch. <laughs> uh, and I want to say thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, Daily Harvest. Make sure to enjoy this time of year even more, like us, uh, with Daily Harvest. Go to dailyharvest.com slash bell, B-E-A-W, to get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash bell for up to $40 off your first box. Dailyharvest.com slash bell. Also, thank you to ZipRecruiter. Remember that right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive address, okay? So it's ZipRecruiter.com slash bill. You have to, have to visit it with the bill at the end to get this offer. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash bill. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash bill. Also, thank you to one of my favorite games, Best Fiend. Make sure to download Best Fiends for free today at the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, okay? Best Fiends. And thank you to Skillshare. Make sure to explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash bell and get one month free trial of premium membership. That's one month of premium membership at Skillshare.com slash bell. Shout out to our sponsor, Barbell Brigade. That's me and my Bears company. And for those of you guys who want to get started on your fitness journey but don't know where to start, go to BarbellBrigade.com, your home of strength, and it's your ultimate fitness resource. We literally have everything on the site. We have blogs to help you get you educated. We have supplements. We have apparel. We have lifting equipment. We even have digital programs to help you get jump started on your training. Make sure you go to barbellbrigade.com and get started on your fitness now. Also, shout out to our sponsor, Jumbi Matcha. For those of you guys who are looking to get your day started the right way, could tap into all the antioxidants and the theanine of refreshing, delicious, ceremonial grade matcha. Make sure to use the code BAIL, B-E-A-W, to get 10% off all the daily serving and also matcha tins at jumbishop.com. See you guys there. Bye-bye. Bye.